Especially during the diner sequence, uh, there are a lot of uh, influences from things like Inglorious Bastards and certainly Man in the High Castle. Uh, is there any other pieces of media that you have that your team has looked at uh, for inspiration for some other parts of the game? Well, <laughs> trying to solve similar creative problems. Lands us sometimes, uh, or lands us sometimes in similar similar territory. Uh, Man in the High Castle. I haven't read the book and I haven't seen it, and and purposely so because I don't want to be, on some level, influenced by it. But of course, not seeing it or reading it also means that you are susceptible to doing similar things because you don't know what's in there, right? So so I don't know. Maybe. Oh yeah, no, I didn't answer your broader question about what influences us. So I think there are uh, there really are a million things that does, and I think that's the best way to approach this is just being open to whatever is out there and explore and and uh, see things. And and it's also, I mean, we have our little creative collective here, so so different people in that group are intrigued by different things. So our art director Axel, for example, he has. Uh, very, very deep interest in all kinds of stuff that I would never, you know, uh, get into or be interested in, and, and so we can complicate, uh, complement each other. Where I, uh, where I may take inspiration from somewhere, he takes it from somewhere else, and, and sort of our mind meld then that happens as we develop the game uh, takes us to new territory. So uh, I don't know. It's it's not something specific. It's a lot of stuff. One of the things I liked about the original story was you kind of you got to go the uh, the resistance grow throughout the game. You'd see new characters join the base, and you get more resources, etc. Is that something we're right. going to see more of throughout this story, or did you kind of intentionally reset everything so uh, BJ and the survivors stay the underdog? Oh no, no, and and I also I that's something I really love this the idea of resetting stuff. Um, uh, for, uh, that, that was how it used to be on TV back in the day. If you remember, every every show would re reset every episode. Uh, but nowadays we have good TV where you know there are, there are story arcs that span across a season and then it's it it finishes and then something new starts the next season. I think that's amazing. Um, if you, uh, I mean, the best example of that might be the TV series for Fargo, where they just completely reboot it every year, basically, which I'm very, very impressed by. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, so, so this game, uh, all of the surviving characters from the last game carry over into this one. And then, of course, as you uh, travel the US and you make contacts with uh, new resistance groups there, uh, your base starts to fill up even more, right? So. So it became quite daunting after a while because we have so many characters in this one. And uh, so we have over 100 actors. Uh, maybe wow. not over, maybe right at the line, but about 100 actors for the game. Uh, wow. And um, and so, yeah, it, it complicates things just in, in terms of the scope. And uh, we had this, we did this, um, playtest thing and one of the comments was that the characters are too interesting because wow. a, pro a problem you're dealing with them when you're introduced when you have a lot of characters in the game and if you really feel like we really try to make each and every one special and unique and have their own thing going so but of course um, when you introduce thing people pretty close to the end of the game then you don't get to spend so much time with them so it becomes this weird thing where a character is too lovable for the amount of time you have them in the game, you know. Mm. But we are uh, hopefully, if this one does well, we hope to get to do a third one because we, of course, would love to do a trilogy. Uh, and maybe, so, uh, the, if that happens, they will have a chance to be around a little longer. Uh, one of the things that I really loved about the previous game uh, was that it was, let me try to phrase this. The the resistance in it, it was a story of resistance against Nazism and fascism without uh, 
the sort of same nationalistic bend that a lot of like World War II narrative takes take where it ends up being, you know, the United States is this moral good guy. This is a bunch of people coming together to oppose this thing because they know it's wrong and they hate it. And there's no like hoorah, do it, do it for the, the home team thing. Uh, moving it to America this time, what sort of considerations are you taking? Um, is it going to be, you know, is that narrative going to shift? Not really. I mean, uh, America, in terms of the mythology or sort of the, 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 the facts of this world is that uh, it's just p a part of Nazi Germany, right? It's, it's the American territories. So, so the people that you ban with there are the people who are, are, have, have found a way to resist that somehow, right? Um, but then the end goal is, of course, to, to try and trigger a revolution in the country. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, it, on that side, it's, it's not very, I mean, it's a continuation of the same build. So, so in the first game, you start out with nothing, like there is no resistance, and the, and the, and the people that you find are like in prison. Uh, but there are like three people out there and then slowly you start building momentum and, and it becomes something and you add more people to your group and, and so that momentum sort of carries forward in this game where but it, so it's on a, on a little on a bigger scale but it's the same basic premise a little bit related to <laughs> you first deal with that. Uh, was this conceived initially as a trilogy in terms of the story arc and how you put the, the characters together yes yes and, and so of course when you're when you're making the first one you have no idea how it's going to do so so it's a it's a little bit scary but at the same time you know that unless you start building in things uh, you won't you won't have enough or or it, it, you can you can really sort of make a, a better meta arc over the whole thing if you're building in stuff that will be cashed in later on in the first one. So we did a lot of that uh, in the first game, like, um, you know, uh, finding the, the power armor in the first game, we don't really get deep into it in that game, but it, but it uh, play, plays a bigger part in this one. And then, um, yeah, so many things like that, different characters and, and so forth. Uh, yeah, so so we always hope to, to be able to make a trilogy, and so we're very excited to be making the second one. Well, I assume, though, I mean, if, if for some reason you didn't make a third, would the second one's ending be satisfactory, or is it sort of a cliffhanger? No, I, 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 we, we, it's, it's the same thing that I talked about before, about the seasons wrapping up, you know? Mm. Uh, like if if uh, so so uh, and it, that's another fun challenge is to make a satisfactory ending that also allows you to do a sequel. For it. Mm. <laughs> we stretched that one pretty far in the first game, uh, but anyway, it's um, yeah. So no, we see everything. We want everything to be a fully a fully contained satisfactory experience, game by game, but also work together as a as a. That's a series of games. Um, all right, so uh, my next question is, uh, you mentioned that you have characters that could possibly be too interesting and you developed this love for them. So my thing is, I know you came out with the Old Blood as a um, DLC for um, Wolfenstein. Do you think that if you was to do a DLC for this Wolfenstein, it would, uh, it won't take, it, it won't have BJ as the lead character but you'll play as somebody else because i confront shorty with the afro i don't remember her name but but um yo she's serious son she like she ready to kill everything son i would love to play as her and also be it'd be good to play as like a black strong like female lead too in a world like that because because um just let you know uh you know the great team here allowed us to play the game and one of the best parts of my experiences today was when I shot this dude in his leg and his leg like flew off and he was like hopping on his leg. And you see the meat and the blood dropping. It was emotional, dude. It was crazy, son. So I'm just saying like, I would love to see that, but played from a different perspective. I, I love you, by the way. Yeah, that's a good idea. I mean, we, we're <laughs> not, so, not something we're thinking about at the moment while we're trying to finish this one, but, but who knows? 
it will be interesting to explore. And I'm glad you like our gore system. We have spent a lot of time on that one. Yeah, I think I think um I think Call of Duty and like you know Battlefield and these other games, as great as they are, I think there's a lot they can learn from what you guys is doing. Seriously, facts. I'm telling you. Thank you. Thank you. That's a very good compliment. Thank you so much. Yo.